Who are the worst YouTubers out there? Who is the first person that crosses your mind when I say that? Is it a YouTuber who scams their audience for money? If you guys want to help me pay for my Tesla, please go ahead and dig deep. I sure would like a free Tesla. Reach down in your pockets and give me a hundred thousand dollars tonight. Or maybe a YouTuber that mocks people with disabilities. Dude, I hate fake re alright? I just hate fake people. Or the worst of them all, probably, a YouTuber who grooms minors. This iceberg chart is something a bit different than I usually cover. The deeper that I dive in, the more disturbed I was. This video will cover, like the title says, the worst YouTubers out there, but not only them, but the most evil and sinister channels also. I will try to do my best to explain every entry and why are they on the list. I also need to state that the first layer is a bit lighter than the rest, so it takes some time that the iceberg chart really shows its charms. But the most important thing is, I thank you so much for tuning in and let's start this video. Enjoy the video. Ethan Klein, a YouTuber and content creator known for co-founding the YouTube channel H3H3 Productions with his wife Hila Klein. Now as you guys know, I have uh, been the subject of many videos in the past several years. People do not like Ethan. The channel gained popularity for its reaction videos, satirical content and commentary on the internet culture. Is a 6'5 black dude scary more than a 6'5 white dude? No. Is it supposed to? How do I get out of this? One of the H3H3 most famous videos is without any doubt Vape Nation, our satirical take on vaping culture. The couple also hosts the H3 podcast, a long form interview podcast covering internet trends and featuring notable personalities. Good, but why is he on the list? Ethan is a hypocrite. He is greedy. This is very bad. Well, shall we start with the beef with PewDiePie, let's say. Ethan made a hypocritical statement where he threw PewDiePie under the bus for racism scandals, even if just few months before that, Ethan himself repeatedly said homophobic and racist slurs during his podcast with iDubs. He, H3 is a hypocrite oh, because no. he said n that one is oh. tasteless. That one is, is not good. That's not a good take. I mean, why would you call somebody out when you're also guilty of doing such things? It doesn't make any sense. You can't take me down. Well... I've already said the n-word. Live. Let's not invite you, anyone. You can't touch me. Also funny thing is when YouTube released tools to allow advertisers to avoid offensive videos, Ethan claimed that these tools were overly broad and negatively affecting unrelated content including his channel. This is very bad. But if you're following the guidelines, I mean there is no fear from YouTube, am I right? He said I don't think I'm a hypocrite. Currently, he is not making any videos on his main channel, just making podcasts with various hosts. He was criticized because he didn't want to focus on high effort videos on his main channel, but rather pump low effort videos in the form of a podcast. He stopped making H3 videos because I'm like the worst person that has ever lived. And that's also the point where we saw Ethan, who was actually a carefree individual, starting to go bitter mostly because of the comments he got over the years. Exactly, it's that shocking. Who would do that? His channel faced some decline in the subscriber rate. He also had a huge beef with Kimstar, which is also on the list and this resulted even in a bigger decline of his channel. By the way, he also stated online that everybody who is involved with the church is also involved with child abuse and CP. What? Which is just, uh, I don't know. What exactly does the Catholic Church do except for kids? That's a bad take, dude. It is just a sad story of how once a beloved YouTuber fell from grace, if we can say so. The NRA meeting that's today in Texas. Someone should bomb that building. Again, this is the first layer, so we're getting darker. I promise you that. I am guilty of all of those things. Komchik is a YouTuber who has been around for quite some time. 
Konchik is actually terrible at Left 4 Dead. In this video, I will go into detail about everything that people don't tend to realize about Konchik, such as his cheating, his lies, and his stealing. His first video was posted like 10 years ago. His channel is primarily focused on Left 4 Dead. The controversy surrounding him is that he was constantly lying to his fans and faked his speedruns on few occasions, which were considered even world records. This is very bad. And there are also some allegations that he has stolen copyright thumbnail materials. But the fans of his channel quickly noticed that Komchik uses various cheats and tries to hide them, for instance, using God mode I'm God. or he is giving himself a grenade launcher so he could have an easier run. Of course, cheating in a game isn't the worst thing out there, but if you're competing and trying to set a world record, it is a thing you definitely want to avoid. Exactly, it's that shocking. Who would do that? Because it will give you a backlash, perhaps not immediately, but people will catch up. And they did with Komchik. But he did remove some of his videos because of this. Even if this isn't the most harmful thing out there, this chart will give you the chills as we go deeper, I promise you that. Badaboon is a prominent Mexican media company and YouTube channel that was founded in 2004 by Cesar Morales. This channel, as of writing this script, has 47 million subscribers, but get this, with only a few thousand views per video. So you know there is something up. They are widely recognized for the diverse content. Oh, okay, I see what you did there. Badaboon covers a spectrum of genres, including entertainment, news, interviews, social experiments, yada yada yada. Everything that gets views and attention, they will simply make a video about it. The channel has gained immense popularity, particularly among Spanish-speaking audience. One of the Badaboon's notable series is Exposing Cheaters. How ironic. To no surprise, Badaboon has received a lot of criticism because their content has been described as, well, we can say fake, and Badaboon employees have come forward with allegations of workplace harassment, sexual harassment, and homophobia within the company. No good. Also, a very clever move of this channel was in 2020, where they staged a fake death as a prank involving one of its hosts. And fake death pranks are the last thing you want to pull off on your channel. Like, you know that guy from the last show? Yeah, he's dead, hit by a car, and then like 10 seconds later, nah man, just a joke. Yes, very sad. Anyway. I mean, that's borderline morbid. This stunt was meant to be a dramatic revelation of a fake murder. They received widespread criticism for crossing ethical boundaries. Many viewers found the prank to be poor taste. That's a bad take, dude. Ah, and there are also a few times that Badaboon was accused of plagiarism and copying content from other creators without proper credit. These allegations have few tensions with the YouTube community and led to dispute over originality and intellectual property. Also in 2017, Badaboon posted a now very infamous video called basically seen on the screen, which is a 5 minute Super Mario speedrun, in which they claim they had completed Super Mario Bros in 5 minutes, which was later obviously debunked as fake. Shotgun Raids is an English gaming YouTuber who currently makes Minecraft videos. He's mainly known for making videos of himself playing many high pixel minigames, including Skywars and Bed Wars. He's also known for trolling Twitch streamers who stream themselves as hacking. Obviously, I banned him. Let's see what he says. Yeah, but the admin that Shotgun Raids was also exposed for faking his most popular mini series about him catching a player on his server hacking. Oh no. Oh, no. Along with this, there have been a few YouTubers who called him out for stealing their ideas. The things that I found about him 
is that he's using extremely clickbaity thumbnails and overall combined with misleading content. Also, he caused a lot of drama with a, sm a smaller YouTuber named Tene Bros. He made a huge video exposing him, telling stories and showing direct messages with him and other stuff, which Shotgun Reigns obviously didn't like. But like I said, this is the only first layer, but besides the drama, I didn't find anything dark here, so let's move to Leafy. Like x-ray that's so evil when there's like kids in africa that are literally you know starving and then he's like yup just go after the x-ray like hey, what say say what leafy is here or simply leafy is american internet personality best known for his now terminated youtube channel or i might just kill myself <laughs> <laughs> You, asshole. you wouldn't be laughing if you were suicidal. Oh my god. I never thought about it that way. Shit. I'm a goddamn asshole. Which contained reaction, drama, and gaming videos with commentary. Oh my god. Who is this guy? What is he fucking handy? Although he started his YouTube channel in 2013, he gained popularity three years later when he started criticizing smaller creators for their appearance and his content went viral. One of the major reasons why fans flocked to him, nonchalant, no hold bars criticism of a god YouTuber named Mr. Black Darkness 666, the most metal name out there I think. But let's take an even closer look why Leaf is on the list. When you could kill us with a sharp object, come on. Beginning in 2016, Leafy was involved in several conflicts with other YouTubers, which led to allegations of cyberbullying. YouTube terminated his account in 2020 for repeated violations of their harassment policies. Actually, showing some of this because some of this is. It's honestly fucking insane, alright? Now, to expand this a bit more, he faces controversies, including a swatting campaign in 2015 to 2016. One of the terrible things he did was also mocking individuals with disabilities leading to a community backlash, but at least he apologized for that. Also in 2016, the YouTuber iDubs also accused Leafy for cyberbullying in a Content Cop episode. After a hiatus from 2017, Leafy returned in April of 2020 to YouTube, insulting iDubs and resuming regular content. In July of that year, he was also criticized by a Twitch streamer called Pokimane, leading to further controversy. On August 21, 2020, Leafy's YouTube account was permanently banned for policy violations. But it's really a mind if you think about it. Like every single person you talk to, if you look at their hands, 100% they have matched with those hands. Fuck me, everybody. Your mom, your dad, Uncle Melvin. And ultimately, he was forced to, to turn to Twitch and Storyfire. But the story doesn't end here because Twitch also banned his account on September 11, 2020. Quoting Twitch, hateful conduct and threats of violence. I mean, if you succeed to be banned by the two most popular platforms out there, that says something about you. I mean, I can make a normal video naked. I can't make a face cam video naked. What the fuck? Kimstar is a controversial internet personality and the host of Drama Alert, a YouTube channel focused on news and drama within the online community. You will be known at the end of this as a fucking liar, a manipulator, and a fucking hypocrite. Kimstar has been a central figure in various online controversies, often stirring up drama and engaging in conflicts with other content creators. You know I only tell the truth. He's known for his outspoken and polarizing style, frequently attracting both support and criticism. Besides using racial slurs, he tweeted that he can't wait to tweet about Total Biscuit's death because he had cancer. Ugh, yeah, well. Now I want to be like, hmm, can't wait to report your death. <laughs> like, seriously, what's wrong with you, asshole? Not only that, but also body shaming, and the list continues. That's the most important thing to me. And he also falsely accused a RuneScape Twitch streamer called Tony Winchester, known as RS. 
glory and gold of being a pedophile. Having confused him with John Phillips, a convicted sex offender who used to play RuneScape to attract children. And this is the point where it all starts to go a bit darker. In April of 2019, Kimstar posted a drama alert interview with a YouTuber Ethica, who had been displaying erratic behavior before the interview. During the conversation, Ethica made statements centered on death and his perspectives on life, including referring to himself as the Antichrist and expressing a desire to purge all life. Kim questioned whatever Ethica's actions were public stunts or a general mental breakdown. Ethica stated he denied seeking any publicity and even later stated that life is like a video game and that means nothing. Kim raised some questions. If life is just a simulation, this is a straight scam. Then why live? And two months later, Ethica posted a video resembling a suicide note titled I'm sorry, mentioning Kim among others. Ethica's body was discovered in a river and the medical examiner determined drowning as the cause of death. Kim faced criticism being held accountable for Ethica's death, but he argued that Ethica seemed fine privately and doctors deemed he stable. Kim shared texts from Ethica's mother absolving him of blame and expressing love for him and his show. And also in May of 2020, YouTuber Ethan Klein of H3H3 released an exposed video of Kimstar alleging that he exploited Ethica. I don't care if the internet is picking on me. I don't care if the internet hates me. All I want the internet to do is to say my fucking name. Just please say my name. This led to G Fuel even terminating the sponsorship with Kimstar. I'm gonna burn them all to the ground. Every last one. Oh boy, where do we start? Throughout their career, the Paul brothers, both Jake and Logan, made many controversial stuffs, including videos and inappropriate stunts. Jake and Logan Paul are quite known YouTubers and internet personalities. Logan, the older brother, initially gained recognition for his Vine videos, leading to a YouTube career. Jake, inspired by Logan, also rose to prominence on Vine and transitioned to YouTube. Both become known for their controversial content, pranks and vlogs. I will give you a few examples just to get an idea if you somehow don't know about the Paul brothers. Logan Paul in 2017 made a video about the Aikogara forest, where Logan faced intense backlash for uploading a video showing a victim in the forest. That one is oh. tasteless. That one is, is not good. That's not a good take. The video was obviously widely criticized and even led YouTube to temporarily suspend his ads on his channel. But in 2017 happened something quite disturbing. For whatever reason, Logan decided to use a taser on dead rats, resulting in further criticism for his inappropriate and disrespectful behavior. Good, let's take a look at his brother, Jay. Jake had a team called Jake's Team 10, a social media incubator and talent management company, which faced internal controversies including public disputes and departures of team members. Also, they got some neighbor complaints in 2017, which also resulted in some tensions with the local authorities. And let's mention the infamous FBI raid in 2020. Jake's home was raided by the FBI in a connection with an ongoing investigation. Although specific details about the investigation were not immediately disclosed, it is important to know that both brothers have been involved in numerous controversies over the years. So, Have you ever heard of a game called Yandere Simulator? No? Good, it doesn't matter, because the game will never be released. Huh? And I can add it to my Lost Game series. By the way, check the series out. Now, let's not be harsh. The game is, after all, a heavily anticipated game. I couldn't help but notice that you seem quite sad about something. Would you like to talk about it? Huh? Yandere Simulator follows a high schooler named Ayano Aishi, who has an unhealthy level of obsession with her senpai, 
Taro. In order to win Taro's heart, she must eliminate her rivals. The term Yandere is a term for a person who love drives them to obsession and violence. These students, taught fictional characters, are attending a high school and are heavily implied to be underage. Is this necessary to the game? Is this pertinent information for my everyday life? I go with pink, sure, why not? Well, the developer of this quite nice game had some allegations. On August 1st, 2023, YouTuber Pixels After Dark uploaded a video involving Yandere Dev titled How Yandere Dev Profited of His Predator Allegations. Hey, About my life at this point, I'm questioning much, absolutely everything. Maybe this will take your mind oh, off oh, of the oh, no, oh, no. The Yandere developer acknowledged in the blog post that he occasionally entered what some describe quote flirty remarks from a fan. He playfully labeled those as foolish within the narrative, admitting to a and I quote a lapse of judgment of justifying an adult's friendship with a minor. As a symbolic gesture of remorse, he decided to make a thousand dollar donation to a non-profit organization dedicated to helping victims of sexual violence. Despite those actions, he lost some support from his fans. At the end, I mean, of course he did. But besides that, he's also known for constantly slowing down his progress over his game Yandere Simulator, which also did lead to some hate. Uh Nicocado Avocado, aka Nicholas Perry, began his journey on YouTube as a skinny vegan with a weight between 150 and 160 pounds. If it wasn't water weight, could I do this? Until now, he's doubled his weight and he's almost a cyborg because of all the machinery he needs to stay alive. <laughs> Mugpin videos are videos where you would just watch an individual eat themselves until they are sick. Because of this, he has also many health issues. Which is no wonder. I look like a blueberry! I look like a blueberry! He's also releasing videos on a daily basis. Until this point, Nikocado had many controversies and a lot of people despised him for unnecessary disgusting videos where he would physically and verbally abuse now his ex-husband. It's sad to see how Nikocado is basically eating himself to death in front of our eyes and there is almost nothing we can do. Besides all the attention he's getting, he still wasn't satisfied and he loves to start a drama from time to time. For example, he faced allegations of harassment and invasion of privacy from a muck painter Stephanie So, following their collaboration in a spicy noodle challenge video. Stephanie claimed feeling unsafe during the collaboration and accused Perry of sending harassing texts and taking photos inside of her home. The allegations led to a public dispute between the two, where both parties produced videos and evidence to support their claims. This controversy obviously sparked a significant response from the viewers. Many people think he has also some mental issues because of this. Oh, 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 oh. But I let you to be the judge. He's also taking advantage by uploading multiple videos with offensive thumbnails and titles such like My new diet as a disabled person. He also claimed at one point he was Jesus and uh, I don't know what to say. Did I mention he has our OnlyFans account? It's your boss. Yep, and he also stated he would sue everyone who would leak his photos from the page. And yeah, this is Nikocado in a nutshell. It's different, okay? I'm actual. I'm actually a person strategizing what I do. I'm on time. You're the fat. You're the fat. You're the fat. What is your problem? How do you keep calling me fat online? 
How do they know you're fat? How do they know I'm fat? I don't know I'm fat. I don't, God damn it! Boogie is currently on a rampage because of the documentary made about him, which is also top notch. Sharing light on his personal life, perhaps more than he wanted. Calm down. No! He is an old school YouTuber who has gotten himself a ton of hate for bad behavior and a Marty complex. Well, if it's not for me, then nobody can have it. How about that? Don't hey, touch you know my tree. You know Are you kidding me? Stop it. Right? He was also caught in multiple lies over time, e-bagging, and from a YouTuber who was very grateful to someone who just wanted views and tips so he could make money. Mm -hmm. And also the fact he spent over $200,000 on who- The women I dated were pretty, sure, but they were like Arkansas 8s, <laughs> not LA 10s, with sugaring, I got to f them LA 10s and I think that's cool. Doesn't make him any better, especially as his current girlfriend is like 30 years younger than he is. Many think he's manipulating her, which is hard to tell. But there are many more controversies here. It is just sad to see Boogie where he is now, because he was very beloved by the community as I found out and now he's basically just broke and bitter, where he lives from paycheck to paycheck and from the ad revenue just to survive. <laughs> And he did make a lot of money because he invested like 750,000 in crypto and lost it all. And if he had the prices of the hoops and his hobbies of collecting cards, arcades, games and so on, made the situation even worse because he didn't even pay the loan to his bank to buy his quarter million house, which is just ridiculous. You're kidding! Judge, judge. And nowadays he's just desperate for any attention. But this isn't the end. He loves very dark humor, which is sometimes really questionable, and loves to use racial slurs as those are just words. And I don't have any Mountain Dew! Like, I, I, I saw some Mountain Lightning earlier. Where, where did you hide the Mountain Dew? And he did make a few public statements, which did left a mark on his reputation. But if you want to hear more about him, there is the documentary. Or tell me down below if you're interested in a deep dive about him or any other YouTuber you saw on the list. Also, the creator of the documentary was on the podcast from Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers. If you want to check out some more info behind the documentary. Permit the frog drink the gay potion. This YouTuber is simply all about the controversy. He embraced the whole aspect of that. He made a popular series in which he would trespass in various locations for 24 hours, like schools, local shops, and the mall. Because of that, he was also one time arrested by the securities in the mall. After his arrest, he was fined with $50,000 for his clever action. <laughs> also, that's just a great message to send to your audience to break into shops. Frog. He normally is super scared to do 3am challenges, but I convinced them to do it for you guys. <laughs> Not only that, but also YouTube demonetized his channel. But is this the end? Oh, we are getting just started. He also started like a 3 a.m. type of a series, in which he was obviously taking advantage of younger audience, with its content and thumbnails. I died. What the heck, guys? This is honestly messed up. This takes even a darker turn as Jay Station uses a Ouija board to communicate with the dead, 
The problem was that he wanted to talk to XXX Tentacion, which left so many people wondering why would he do that. People did criticize him that he was trying to exploit people's death for views in such bad fashion. And he did those videos with little or no emotions of the passing of the actual victims. But if we take a look at January of 2020, he made a video that is just a sherry on the top. It's where J Station posted a video titling saying my last goodbye to my girlfriend Alexa, rest in paradise. This is not a sad story of his girlfriend, but it's a story where J Station actually faked her death. We saw that he didn't have any morals in regards to getting views, but nobody did expect this. He even told in the video that his girlfriend only wish was to reach 1 million subscribers. This is some psycho manipulation on the next level. There is just no other way to describe it. Our guy Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers, like always, found some interest in the story to investigate this. And even called the police to see if his girlfriend was actually dead. And I mean, he obviously found out that this was not the case. This led to both of his channels being demonetized because the police connected YouTube. Not even that, he even broke up with his girlfriend and YouTube even decided to terminate his channel. But let's see now the crazy story behind Hannah Sabata. I just stole a car and robbed a bank. Now I am rich, I can pay off my college financial aid and tomorrow I am going on a shopping spree. Bite me, I love Green Day. This is the description of a video posted by Jelly Benny called the Chick Bank Robber. With this little info, can you imagine about what this entry is about? So, in 2012, this 19 year old girl decided it would be wise to rob a bank and she managed to steal $6,000. There are many things you could do after acquiring this type of money. By the way, don't rob banks, please. But let's say you did, what would be the wise thing to do? Maybe make a video called Chick Bank Robber and upload it to YouTube to brag about the deed you done. Well this is perhaps the opposite from a wise move. But Hannah didn't think much about this. The result was she was caught the same day. What I also found out, she was imprisoned at the end of 2012 and she got released in 2017, but violated her parole, landed back in jail and then assaulted an officer. Now she is facing an additional 3 years on top of the remaining original sentence. This story did make me sad because this young girl threw her young adult life for $6,000 which is a lot of money, but it's too little considering she lost a good part of her 20s. What made this video more uncomfortable was the end of the video, which is a bit dark. She stated that the government took her baby before she could see her and charged her with neglect, but sadly I didn't find any info about the baby part. And now let's go to the last entry of this layer. Charles Ross, known as the Ross Creations on YouTube, had made a name from himself with prank videos and gaining about 2 million followers across his channels, Vlog Creations and Ross Creations. His stunts were classic stunts you would often see involving unsuspecting people, which even led to 6 arrests in Florida. Because Ross impersonated a police officer, which is a very smart thing to do. He wanted even to write a parking ticket to a woman at a parking lot. She saw something was wrong and she was concerned for the safety of her two children. Because he did have a baton on his belt. She then started to raise her voice until Charles basically said it was praying and offered a tickets for a concert. But in the end she called the authorities. Despite multiple arrests, Ross has never been convicted, facing only fines and community service. And he also filmed himself doing a backflip over two officers sitting on a park bench. They tackled him and cuffed him while the camera rolled. The competitive world of YouTuber pranks encourages creators to push boundaries. I mean, despite YouTube's attempts to regulate stuff, some creators still produce controversial content for their views. 
Ross is just a piece of history which reflects the challenges of holding pranksters uncountable for their actions. This is another huge rabbit hole that deserves a separate video, but I will try to give you a good idea about this. Some channels abuse copyright laws and try to take down videos or channels they simply don't like. Some of them are like NS Patru and Kimstar, but there are many more of course. People would even claim they are working on behalf of other companies, I mean it's like in the wild west. Some YouTubers just see a video they don't like because it's mostly about them and then they are making a copyright claim. And if your channel is getting too many strikes, you can even get a red card and say bye bye to your channel. Wild stuff, I know. But I think this video is long enough and I hope you enjoyed this week's video. This was quite a fun ride and I can't wait to show you the rest of the chart. Like always, if you find this video interesting, please leave a like consider subscribing to the channel to see more content like this. There are many more other iceberg charts on my channel if you want to check them out. And that's all from me now. I thank you for the support lately and I see you in the next one. Bye.